Welcome to our lecture online. We're still trying to find the transmission coefficient by finding the ratio f divided by a since the transmission coefficient, which is also the probability that a particle will go through a barrier, is defined as the f squared divided by a squared, f being the amplitude of the wave on the other side of the boundary, a being the amplitude of the wave before it reaches the boundary. The ratio of those amplitudes squared is the transmission coefficient, also the probability that the particle will go through the barrier. So, so far, we, again, we have already worked on it for a couple of videos here. We're trying to find that ratio f over a, and the next step is to set the two equations that we solved for f equal to one another. Those were equations 3 and 4 from the boundary conditions, which you can look at in the previous video. And then we're going to solve for c in terms of d. In other words, we're going to say c is a function of d. Remember, c and d also are coefficients or they're constants coming from our boundary conditions. So here we set the first equation of f equal to the second equation of f. And when we do that, we want to take all the terms that have a c in them, move to the left side, and all the terms with d, move them to the right side. And when we do that, we right away realize that the exponent minus L times IK1 plus alpha is the same as minus L times IK1 plus alpha. So we can factor out the E to the minus L IK1 plus alpha, and we have a coefficient of 1 here, and we have a coefficient of minus alpha over IK1. So we can also factor that out, 1 plus alpha over IK1, and then we multiply it times C, and we do the same on the right side. Again, notice that both of the terms that have the d in them have the e to the same exponent, so we can factor that out. And again, we factor out a 1 and an alpha over ik1. So we do that here, of course, we bring this over to the right side. The positive 1 turns into a negative 1, but the constants here, I mean the exponents of their exponentials remain the same. Then, since we're trying to isolate c, we're going to divide both sides of the equation by this, this quantity right here. We put that in the denominator. Then you can see that e to this exponent divided by e to this exponent, we simply subtract these from that, but to, to do that without making a mistake, we're going to multiply these out, so end up with minus l i k1 plus l alpha from the top, and then we subtract these two negative portions of the exponent, they become positive when we bring them to the top, so we have l i k1 plus l alpha, and then of course we have this divided by this, so we're going to take the common denominator, which is i k1, and ik1, when we do that, notice both of these denominators can cancel out. And then we're left with, notice we have a minus l1k1 and a plus l1k1, they cancel out, and we're left with two of these. So we have c equals d times e to the 2 alpha l. Alpha, of course, is something that's determined by the relative um, energy of the particle versus the energy of the barrier, the mass of the particle, and of course, h bar. That will give us the alpha term. The K1 is, is what we call the wave number in region 1. And if we eliminate the denominators, we end up with minus IK1 plus alpha over IK1 plus alpha. So now we have a nice equation that has C expressed in terms of D. So the next step, since we already eliminated A, is not to eliminate C from all the equations by simply substituting for every C the quantity D times this quantity right there. So that's our next step, is to go back to all our equations and eliminate C by substituting C by this quantity there. So that's going to be our next video.